Hi, my name is Tony Avenia, and I want to help you learn how to design t-shirts. Today we'll be using Adobe Illustrator, and the tools we'll be using are the Selection Tool, the Direct Selection Tool, the Ellipse Tool, the Line Segment Tool, Transform Again, Expand, Pathfinder Palette, Shape Builder Tool, Align Palette, Text Tool, and Appearance Palette. The fonts we'll be using are Pacifico and Glegu. And I have included a clip art file called palmtrees.ai. You can find the fonts in clip art in the description below. I'll leave a link. And I want you to um, install the fonts and open up your clip art before we get started. Okay, so now let's open a new file. So we're going to File New. We'll be using inches this time. Make 12 inches by 12 inches RGB color mode and click Create. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make a circle. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and I have um, square here or the rectangle tool in the front. So I'm just going to click and hold until I see this fly out menu. Click on ellipse. I can press L on my keyboard to get to get to that instead of having to go to this toolbar all the time. I'm going to double click on my artboard and I'm going to make a nine tab by nine ellipse which is a perfect which will make a perfect nine inch circle move that to the center of my artboard and now I have it set set to default so it's a white fill with the black stroke and what I want to do is make the fill black and get rid of the stroke altogether so I'm going to come over here to these two swatches on the bottom of of this toolbar on the left click on this little right arrow, uh, right angle with two arrows, and that will swap the fill and the stroke. But I still don't want that stroke, so I'm gonna click on the stroke swatch, which is the one that looks like, uh, it looks like the other swatch, but it has a little square in the middle that lets you know it's a stroke. And I'm going to click on the none. That will completely get rid of that stroke. Okay, so now that we have that done, we wanna use our Selection tool, click on our artboard to make sure that our circle is deselected. And then I'm going to go to my line segment tool. I'm just going to make a line right here across the middle. I'm going to click and drag. And now you notice that as I drag, this line's moving all over the place. So if I hold down shift, it'll make it perfectly horizontal. And I want that right in the middle overlapping my circle. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool and we come up here to stroke. I'm going to make this an eight point stroke and mine is set to white and I do not want it to be a white stroke because I can't see it on the artboard. So I'm going to go to my swatches you can find them here window swatches. I'm just going to click this, this red and now I have a red stroke. If you have, if you have the fill in front of the stroke, it will so it'll make change the fill to whatever color you click, and you don't want that. You want the stroke. So whichever one of these swatches is is in the front is the one that you're affecting. So now I'm gonna click on the selection tool, click and drag. I'm gonna hold down shift. You don't have to necessarily, but I like to hold down shift because it keeps it locked in place on the grid, and I'm gonna intersect it with the top of the circle. So here with my selection tool, I'm going to click on this line, hold down Option and Shift, and just move my line down a little bit here. And I want to make nine copies of this. So that's one. I'm going to Object, Transform again. And what that'll do is it'll duplicate the copy and the distance that we just did. And instead of having to do this menu every time, I can just push Command-D on Mac, Control-D on Windows. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I push Command-D until I got nine of these lines. Just kept pushing it over and over. I am using my selection tool. Select this bottom path, the bottom line, move it down and intersect it with the bottom of my circle. So I'm going to use my selection tool, click and drag from the outside. So I'm just overlapping the red lines. I don't want to select the circle. Then from there, I'm going to go to my align, align palette. And I want to distribute objects, vertical, vertical distribute center. 
And so if you have this um, show options here, it, you can have it either aligned to the artboard or to a key object or to the selection. And we want it aligned to selection. So I'm going to click that and it's just going to distribute all of those lines evenly. So I'm going to use my selection tool, click on my artboard to, to deselect everything. I'm going to select this top line and push delete on my keyboard. The bottom line, select that, delete on my keyboard. And now what I want to do is transform these bottom three lines. So with my selection tool, I'm just going to click and drag and select all three of these. I'm going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. Make sure you click on Preview. Um, and right now it's defaulted to corner, which gives you straight line waves. I want smooth that gives you more of a curved wave. Size, if you have it set to absolute here, it will do it by inches. Relative by percentage, I want to do 1% for the size. And then ridges per segment, we're going to keep it at 4. You can make this higher or lower depending on how many waves you want. But we will do 4. Click OK, and it's transformed those. So now I want to t um, turn these from, from just a line with a stroke to an actual rectangle. Or, and these ones that will be a wave, but it'll be a shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these. So selection tool, click and drag, and just touch the red parts. Object, expand appearance. Then again, object, expand. Make sure fill and stroke are checked. Click OK. And now it's turned these into objects. So you can see instead of a line, it's an actual outlined object. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these red lines to make slices in this circle. So I'm going to select everything, select all. Then I'm going to go to my... And I'm going to go to my Pathfinder. And now when I'm in the Pathfinder, I can find it here, Window, Pathfinder. When I'm in my Pathfinder, I just want to use this first one called Divide. And what that's going to do is it's going to divide everything where they overlap, and it'll, uh, it'll erase the black underneath the red. So I'm going to click Pathfinder Divide, and now it's divided it. And it's made it all one group. But if I use my direct selection tool here, you can see that now there's white underneath where there used to be black. It's actually not white, it's just clear. So what I want to do now is use my direct selection tool, click and drag from the top right just into this one little segment. And I'm going to use that to select the rest of the red. So I go select, same, fill in stroke, and that'll select everything that has the same red fill and no stroke. Push delete on my keyboard. And now I can, this is still an object, but now you can see there's nothing where the red used to be. So what I want to do here is go to object ungroup. And now each of these shapes is independent. Okay, once I have that done, I want to change the color on all these. So I'm going to start with this top one. Open my swatches, make it this bright bright yellow right here. And see, you see my um, stroke was in front of my fill. So I want to change that. I'll click None. Then I'll move my fill to the front. And now when I do it, it'll change the color. So OK, the next one I'm going to make this orange color. I'm just going to keep going in line. until I get this red. So I just used all those colors. Now the next one, I'm going to go to this light cyan color. Then the next one will be the medium blue. And then the last one will be the dark blue. OK, so now I have all my colors how I want them. I'm going to use my ellipse tool again. Double click on my artboard. Make this 3.5 by 3.5. And I want this to be yellow. so. With it selected, I'm going to use the eyedropper. You can find that here, or press I on your keyboard, and I'm just going to eyedrop this top color. Now I want to move it here so it's just 
you know, I don't want it to overlap this this lightest blue. I just want it a little bit up and in. So there's some space there. And we don't want this too far to the right. If we are touching this edge, it creates a visual tangent. And that's just something that's kind of uncomfortable to look at. So we just move it in a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is use our selection tool, select this top blue. We're gonna go to object, transform, or, sorry, object, arrange, bring to front. And now that's gonna move this blue in front of everything. So the next thing we wanna do is go to our palm trees clip art file, select everything, copy, go back to our to our, um, the art we are working on, paste that in there. We're gonna move this to about right here. I want I don't want anything except this bottom part overlapping. I'm gonna move it over a little bit and down a little bit until it's about like that. So now I'm gonna select everything again. I'm gonna use my Shape Builder tool. Here, Shift M. I'm gonna hold down option and what this is going to do is it's going to erase it's going to create a slice everywhere that objects overlap so if i hold down option alt on windows it and click on something it'll erase just that little segment so i want to erase the segments of black that are overlapping into white hold down option click wait for it to do its thing Same thing with this middle one, option click. And then this one on the left, option click. Okay, now what that's done <clears throat> Okay, so now what that has done is trimmed those palm trees to the edge of the circle. So now you have the perfect circle shape down there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is get our type tool. We're gonna change our typeface to Pacifico regular. We'll make this, let's see, we'll make it 172 just so we can see it. We're gonna write Venice Beach. Use the selection tool move it here actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this out of the way now i'm going to select with my selection tool click and drag across all of these design elements and group them together so i'm going to go object group so now this is all one unit and i can use that to center to center my type so i click on my venice beach i'm going to use a line center up here now if I cl click and drag everything, I can use the align tools here, horizontal align center. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. And we'll make this, let's say 123 points. Well, let's go 125 points. Okay, so I'm going to click on my Venice Beach, use my eyedropper tool again, and click on this red.
Okay, so what I want to do now is put a stroke around this so it separates from the rest of the art. So I'm going to make sure my type is selected. I'm going to go to my appearance palette and just click here to make a new appearance, a new fill. I'm going to use the same red from down here for my fill color, same red I used in the swatches. My stroke, now remember, this is these are like layers, so I want my stroke layered behind my fill. I'm going to make this an eight point stroke and I'm going to change this color here to white. I want to move this down a little bit so it's not overlapping into the red. Actually, I'll move it all the way down here. So I want it so it's kind of in in between these two, mostly on these bottom two blue colors. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is get my type tool again, change my typeface to Gligoo, Glegu, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. Uh, click here, make sure that my paragraph is centered. I'm going to type out all caps, California. We want this to be small. So I'll make it about that big. Let's see, 50 points. Then I'm going to go into my window. I want type, character. And I want to change the tracking here. I'm going to make this about, let's try 300. Okay, so I'm going to use my eyedropper tool here. Again, eyedropper, and I'm going to eyedrop into this middle blue. I'm going to just move this up a little, and I might move the Venice Beach down a little so it's more uh, coming off the bottom. So let's move this up. We could play with that until it looks exactly how we want it to look. Uh, we could make this type bigger or smaller, set more tracking or less tracking. Most of that's just based. Uh, basically up to your own tastes but that's it a pretty simple design you learned how to use a few new tools today um, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't enjoy it thumbs down if you want to see more content like this please subscribe if you want to see all of my videos um, hit the notification bell we'll see you in the next one and keep on designing